I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I said I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the word line. We invite you to call someone. We invite you to join in with us and hear a word from the Lord because the word of God is good. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this word line. We ask your blessing upon it, Lord. And we thank everyone that's assembled here. We give honor and glory to God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. And we thank God for our leader, Elder Barbara Trotter. And we truly thank God for our technical support, Elder Charmaine. We give God the honor and glory for these women of God taking their time to be with us. And I am Pastor Mary Scott of the Love Cathedral Apostolic Outreach Ministries. God is so good. We want to take this time to welcome the Holy Spirit on our word line. Let us pray. Father, eternal God, our master, oh Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we glorify your holy name. For this is the day that you've made and Lord, we will rejoice and be glad. And you told us to enter in with Thanksgiving and we enter in today with Thanksgiving. Father, you didn't have to wake us up, but you saw fit to wake us up and we give you glory this morning. We say hallelujah this morning. We say thank you, Father. Thank you for your peace and your joy, your love, your tempers and your patience. And Father, as we come together to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that Mary Scott would decrease and your Holy Spirit would increase. We need a word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God, amen and amen. The scripture reading this morning will be coming from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 14. Verse 12 reads, therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but is not the sinful nature to live according to it. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to sinful nature, you will die. But if you live by the spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body. You will live. Verse 14, because those who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Yes. The Holy Spirit is God's promise or guarantee of eternal life for those who believe in him. The Spirit is in us now by faith, and by faith, we are certain to live with Christ forever. You can read more about that in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 23, as well as 1 Corinthians 6 and 14. Put to death the misdeeds of the body means regard as dead. The power of sin in your body is dead. When we regard sins of kill as dead and lifeless, we can ignore temptation when it comes. I am thankful that Paul breaks this down to us because sin has no authority or power over us. The only way that sin has power and authority over us is that we give it to we give our bodies over to sin so we know as children of god we rebuke the spirit of sin and we want to receive the spirit of the holy spirit we learned earlier in the chapters that when we first accepted jesus as our lord and savior the holy spirit was right there with us so uh, we are no longer we are no longer cringing, and fearful slaves. Instead, we are the master's children. What a privilege, because we are God's children. We share in the greatness, the, the greatest treasure of all. We are co-heirs. God has already given us his best gifts. He's, he's given us his son, Jesus, his Holy Spirit, forgiveness, and eternal life. And he encourages us to ask him whatever we need 
So that's what we're to do. We're to ask the Lord for whatever privilege, privilege to have the Holy Spirit to have Jesus in our in our life. It's a privilege because we know that we were once lost in a and full of sin in a dying world. We didn't know which way to go or what to do. But God brought us in and saved us just in time. He gave us the ability to stand. So no, we're not obligated to our flesh, our human nature, our worldliness our sinful capacity, but we're we're charged to live according to the Holy Spirit. And if we allow the Holy Spirit, he will lead and guide us into all truth. So if you are living according to the flesh, then you will die. But if you're living according to the power of the Holy Spirit, you have habitually put away death, the sinful deeds of the body, and you will really live forever. For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And we're daughters. So, you know, that, that speaks for the males and the females. God has given us this special gift to be found in him, to be Holy Ghost filled, to be righteous. But we can't do this without the Holy Spirit. We can't do this on our own. And you know that there's no good thing in flesh. Flesh has no good thing in it. It can't do nothing. But the most important part is that flesh don't have authority over us. Flesh do not rule. So when temptation comes, that's when you allow the Holy Spirit to come in and fight for you. You don't have to fight in the flesh, but you fight in the spirit. You let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you into all truth. You stand firm on what the word of God says. And the enemy has to flee. We truly thank God for just giving us the strength and the ability to stand. And when we've done all that we can do, we stand on the word of God because the word of God is what keeps us. The law of sin has no authority over us anymore. It can't point out sin. It can't do it cannot do anything by itself. Sin is no longer a part of our life. We thank God as our Father for allowing the Holy Spirit to cleanse us and wash us. <laughs> that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because, because we are filled with the Holy Spirit does not mean that we To make us sin, but he's going to dangle everything in our face that um, we used to do, our favorite food, that he'll put that in your face because he, he wants to tempt us. But we know if we depend and lean on the Holy Spirit, he can't tempt us. But if we try to do it in our flesh, we will fall every time. So yes, my brothers and sisters, we're to stand on the word of God and we're to be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus because uh, we don't have an obligation to sin. Sin no longer has authority over us. So we give God the glory and we give God the honor today for delivering us from the hands of the enemy, for, for de from delivering us that sin don't take rule over us, but the Holy Spirit who is the second head of the Trinity, gives us the strength to stand and let the devil know, shoot your best shot, Satan, but you don't win. Sin no longer has authority over me. I've thrown it in the sea of forgetfulness. I'm living a holy life. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm believing by faith that through Christ Jesus, I can do all things, that, that, that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide me if I allow him to. So we thank God this morning for the word. We thank him for giving us the strength to uh, overcome sin's grip. We thank him for bringing us out of the bondage of sin. We thank God for giving us a new life, not a life of sin, not a life of living by the flesh. The flesh don't control us. Sometimes it'll try. It'll try to tell us 
The Holy Spirit will direct us one way and the flesh will tell us something else to do. But we know as children of God, as Christians, we follow after the word. We do the perfect will of God and not what flesh says. So flesh has to die, has to come under subjection. And so anything that the enemy has tried to bring against you to make you sin, you let the devil know, I place you under my feet and I call on the name of Jesus and I allow the Holy Spirit to enter in to give me the strength and the ability to stand. And when I've done all that I can do, I stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. God, we truly praise you for another chance, Lord God, to get in the word, Lord God, to learn of you, Father God, and to do your will, Lord God. Our desire today, Father, as we go our separate ways, is to share with someone that Jesus Christ loves them, to share with someone that he can deliver you from anything that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you. But first you must get into the word of God and learn what the word of God, then you must allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life. He's already there when you accept Jesus and believe in your heart that he is Lord and savior. He can keep you, he can direct you, he can lead you. He is our teacher. But if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to come out of us, then we won't be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So, Father, this morning we pray, Lord God, as we uh, end this lesson, Lord God, but never away from your presence, Lord God. We pray that some man, woman, boy, or girl will hear the word of God and come running, saying, what must I do to be saved? Father, if there's one on this line today or one listening out there, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that they would accept you as their Lord and Savior, Lord God. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, they can go in and read and share with, uh, share and say what Romans 10 and nine says, Lord, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Lord and savior of my life. And I desire to be saved. And they too can be saved, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, as they come into the word of God, as they begin to disciple the word and learn of you, Father God, that they too can live a life of holiness that the flesh no longer dwells in them and lead them. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of their life and that he's coming back again and he's coming back to save us. Father, we thank you now, Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, that anyone on this line needs a refilling, Lord God. We pray for the refilling of the Holy Ghost and the utterance of speaking in tongues. You said to speak in our most holy language, Lord God, and uh, it would strengthen us, Father God. And we thank you this morning, Father God. Father, we thank you for every soul that's on this line. We thank you for every family represented, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for healing our bodies of sickness and disease. And Lord, we thank you, Father, if there's anyone out there, Lord God, that needs your healing, Lord God, we ask your blessing upon them, Father. Father, we're uh, just praying, Father, for this uh, new variant that they have out as well as COVID-19 and the third variant that they have out, the Delta variant. We're praying and rebuking and casting down and sending it back to the pit of hell. Father, and we're praying that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, will give people the mindset to be safe and to wear their masks, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for every bereaved family, Lord God, those that have lost loved ones, Lord God. We ask for your strength right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. But most of all, Lord God, our prayer this morning is that some soul will come to you and say, what must I do to be saved? Father, we love you, we praise you, and we honor you. And Father, as we go from this line, but never, never from your presence, Lord, we ask that you would guide and lead us into all truth, Lord, that we will be able to go and share the word of God with someone. Lord, that we be able to share hope with someone and let them know that that hope is in Jesus Christ. Lord, that we would be able to share with someone that there's a, a, a true and living God and that he is a, a, alive and able to change anything. We pray for our young people, Lord, as they prepare to go back to school, Lord God. 
Father, just shield and protect them. We pray for the parents, Lord God. We pray for our seniors, Lord God. And we just ask that you bless all in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. This is the day that you've made, and we end with love and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Amen.